Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today. As in this special episode, I'm going to share with you more channeled messages that have been coming through around this time on our planet. If you've been listening to this podcast regularly, I have been sharing these messages sporadically, and I have created a playlist on YouTube where you can listen to the previous messages, get an understanding of how this energy works, how it's coming through, what I'm feeling, as well as how this energy is very different than other messages that I have connected to at times. For those who are new or listening to this information for the first time, this is energy of a very high cosmic level that feels very much about the galactic understandings of Earth's evolution at this time, how the planet is shifting and changing permanently, how the energies are moving through us, how we're feeling them at a human level, but the bigger picture of it all. And it's not simply the 10,000 foot view. It actually feels more like the million mile high perspective that's showing us more of how the energies are moving, but it isn't from the human perspective. So please understand that as I share this information. The information comes in to me often in an unexpected way, usually when I'm alone, and I feel and see the energies through a variety of intuitive means. I can see the images through my third eye, and I receive very strong visuals. And these visuals are often very clear, I see them sort of like a movie projector playing. Then there's information that comes through as knowingness, that understanding of something as an absolute or like a very clear message. Then I also feel the energies. I feel them physically and feel them intuitively. So it's this combination of three senses that I'm feeling when I connect with these energies. And that's how the information comes through. And I share this because I believe it supports all of us in our spiritual understanding and developing our spiritual gifts. So these energies that I typically feel I've mentioned before that they come to me, I don't go to them. They're sort of like, we'll call you, don't call us. So when the information comes through, it's very clear. And I particularly feel a very strong energy of a commander. And this is at a galactic level, a very high vibrational being with a lot of light within, a lot of light around him. And in fact, his energy has become clearer to me over recent months. It's almost like when you're taking a picture and you're focusing in on something, it gets clearer. That's exactly what I'm feeling. His energy is clearer to me and it's closer. He presents himself as a commander, but he works with other energies, other beings. And I feel a total of eight, although I don't see those energies as clearly just yet. And they also show me that how they're energetically working with the planet is through the arrangement of a Merkaba. And the Merkaba energies correlate to how the It's like how the energies are filtered into the planet and filtered out of the planet. And it's this really elaborate energy system that they're showing me around how the energy moves around Earth while also stabilizing the planet so that there isn't the overwhelm or that there isn't too much of an influx of energy. It's almost like they're a bit like gatekeepers from the energies that are coming from the Milky Way, from galactic sources, from other places in our galaxy. And they're making sure that what does get through on the planet is what's needed at this time. So for this particular message and information, the first thing that they're presenting to me is a visual of Earth from space, when you look at the planet. And what we typically see is blue and green. And they're showing me how significant this is in terms of the energetic frequencies of the dominant colors of the planet. And that these are really important basic messages to understand is that the planet is, when you look at it from afar, blue and green. And these are energies of healing. 
This is a healing terrain. There's a lot about the planet that's made to be beautiful, made to be safe, made to be a space where we can individually heal, grow, and flourish, but also where we are grounded, connected, and we have different environments to do our work. And they're showing me the different terrain of the planet whether that is the energies of a desert or a forest, uh, being on a beach, uh, being in a mountaintop retreat. They're showing me the diversity of the planet that we experience as different energies that support our individual healing processes. And it's very important to understand where you are most comfortable doing your healing work, specifically what environments are energetically correct for you. But they're saying this is about the natural world. This is where you naturally feel good in how you're living and how you're experiencing the planet. And that that's actually why many people are going to be called to move or to shift locations or to just even shift from being in the city to being somewhere quieter. That's what is important right now is to look at where you need energetic support in your daily environment where you feel safe. Like that place that's just naturally you is very important. And they're saying that these various terrains are one of the gifts of our planet. We are not like other planets, uh, now they're showing me Mars, that are covered in basically a very similar environment. There's diversity on this planet and it's made to support what humans need in order to move through the various layers of energies that we each came to the planet to work with and work through. So they really wanted to highlight how special this planet is in terms of everything that we have access to. And they're saying that one of the gifts of this current global situation is that we can move away from the, the, the cement, you know, the, the downtown environments. They're showing me city walls and city environments that it's not really the vibration for everyone, but that people have flocked to cities for security. They're saying that as the planet changes in the years ahead, that security is going to shift too, and it's not what you thought it was. It's not the environment, it's not the space, because now you're being given the opportunity to intentionally choose intentionally choose what do I need to do my best work and the work is not simply professional or career work but your life's work your healing work uh, the sense of how you need to feel supported and what that looks like so they're telling me that this is very important right now and in fact to prioritize your environment your daily environment because the more that you are in the correct area for what you need the more you will flourish. Now, understandably, it's not like everyone can just pack up and move somewhere. So they're not saying that everyone is going to be evacuating the cities or moving to a different location. Uh, realistically, that's not possible. But what they are saying is that you do have the ability to bring into your environment what you need that supports your frequency. And so if that means for example, that you need to be more grounded, well then bring in the appropriate crystals or rocks or bring in the appropriate places in your living environment, no matter how big or how small, bring in those natural elements that support what you need. And they're showing me just holding a rock in your hand and whether that is, uh, oh, they're saying it's a uh, um, Lemurian crystal, something that you can just hold in your hand and it gives you that energetic support. It's as simple as that at a baseline level, but that this is very important for how we continue to be in charge of our energies and how we really focus on the power of choice. A lot of their messages are reminding us of our choices, of how we have energetic choices, intentional choices, that what you do and what you need is available to you but there has been too much programming throughout our lives around what we think we have to do. They're calling them unconscious obligations. And basically, we all have 
energies in our lives we just haven't thought about. Things that we just never really sat with and considered, what would I choose in this area of my life? And then they're, they're actually showing me this is a very grounded understanding that it shows up differently for everyone and that you could live someplace that you've always loved living. It's just right for you. It's perfect. It's correct. But they're saying that as people shift their internal frequencies, you're then called to different environments, different spaces. You have different needs that become louder. So they're saying that over the next number of years, there will be more people moving, shifting locales, moving around to a new place on the earth's ley lines, the energetic grid of the planet that is of stronger resonance to what they need now and who they are now. And in fact, the movement is probably going to happen quickly for a number of people and that it could be something that you never considered. And then all of a sudden it feels right. Something connects. So they're saying that keep in mind, this is how the earth is balancing itself. As humans move around, as we shift to different places on the planet, they're showing me how the energy gets dispersed around the planet that stabilizes what the earth needs. Similar to this visual I'm getting is that as three people move south, three people move north. And as five people move east, five people move west. It's understanding that this is all part of a very elaborate orchestrated understanding of supporting ourselves, supporting the planet, and supporting a bigger paradigm shift. And so connected to this is that as people are opening up, expanding essentially into more of who they are, what their next chapter is, what their next choices are, they're showing me a visual of a crystalline body. Crystalline energy is very clear It is actually a light-based energy system that pulses and moves at a very high frequency. This is what they're showing me. And that the crystalline body has become a faster moving experience than the planet has known at this time. But it's only, it's like they're showing me it's only been activated within those who have done enough emotional clearing, that there's been a lot of emotional energy stuck within ourselves at a cellular level, unprocessed soul experienced uh, experiences, unprocessed soul trauma, unprocessed, and they're saying they're actually rejected energies within ourselves, things that we've abandoned, things that we've shunned, things that we haven't healed. All of this is actually being stimulated right now, like stirring the pot to get it moving, to get it flowing, to get it unstuck. Because in order to advance in your physical body and in your energy system, this is the lowest energies that we have to process. And they're saying it has a, it's like the energies have been stuck, paralyzed, frozen from fear, but they're showing me this energy across multiple lifetimes of the energies, it's almost like being being killed or dying or doing something. And as that event happens, as there a traumatic experience, as something even very low vibrational, even if there was like a long living life, but it had a lot of destitute or fear in it, that energy has been stuck in the soul's energy field. And that part of why this lifetime has been so hard for so many people. And it's interesting, they really want to validate this, that there's been a lot of intense work required from so many people in this lifetime alone. It's literally been, probably felt like years of healing, years of experiences, that sense of you've lived many, many lifetimes in this single lifetime. They're saying all of this is part of the bigger picture of what has needed to be cleared out in order to accelerate you forward in order to move you into this next experience of yourself, but you're doing it at a very deep soul level. And so that's why it has been a very challenging lifetime. And they want to acknowledge that, that it's been in stark contrast to the lifetimes that were really simple and straightforward. They're saying too that that's why there are so many people on the planet. Billions and billions because there were many who wanted to not only be present on earth at this time, but who wanted to 
work through what they needed to understand at a soul level. And this is part of the paradigm shift that is happening for humanity, that so many Literally millions of people are these way showers. They're showing me that this is showing up as the new human, the evolved human, and that this is part of the excitement at this time, that there are now these support systems that are helping us move down a very turbulent, tough path but there's never been this level of support before. And so that was part of the agreement. Um, They're showing me that it was a two-way agreement at a soul level. It's sort of that I volunteer to show up and do this work and be here in a physical body at this time, but I need support. And they're saying that that support is present, that it was never about doing it alone, but it was understanding there's things you do have to do on your own, but that doesn't mean you're alone. You know, you're doing it in your own way, on your own timeline, through your own process, but there is support, a bit like support behind the scenes or behind the red curtain. And all of this is part of the bigger plan where there are millions who are undergoing this deep, intense work who are giving space and energy for the new human to flourish. And so now they're bringing me back to the visual of the crystalline body and that in order for that body to be birthed, it has to have space and that space is an energetic opening of what's been cleared out. So all of the work, the healing, the things you've had to do for years, decades, your whole life, it serves a purpose. Um, They're also showing me a timeline where it has to be a step-by-step process. There's certain things that just require you to go into an experience, to be aware of something, because they say that part of what needs to happen for humans is that the physical experience of your life what you actually have happen in your surroundings and your relationships etc it has to then go into your brain where it's not simply like there's no disconnect right where you can remember experiences you've had and it goes into your brain and they're showing me this elaborate conversation that happens between different energy systems the body's energy system the emotional energy system, the aura, uh, the things that are happening at a deeper cellular unconscious level, all of that is in play right now. But we are so focused on our minds that we can miss many things. So we have to have these firsthand experiences that activate They're showing me an activation of the emotional body because the emotions can be so strong and so clear that it's actually a gift of that emotional message around something, whether that is joy and happiness or whether that is something very uh, difficult and, and hard to go through. They're saying there's all these systems working with us that are helping us to reprogram, but also to get out of our heads while Our brains are being reprogrammed within this elaborate energy system. I hope that makes sense because they're basically saying that in the human experience, it's very easy to only be in your mind. But if you were to take your brain out of your body or your brain out of your energy system, you would then open up to all this other stimuli, all this other information that the mind will overlook or that you won't give a lot of attention to. And they're saying that it's really important to understand all of your energy systems, all of the ways you have components speaking to themselves that you haven't really considered or fully owned. And part of this journey of this lifetime is opening up to all these energy systems, all these parts of yourselves, and to work with them all to look at the dialogue or the conversation that you are allowing between all of your energy systems. And they're saying this is very, very important because again, in order for the crystalline body to become activated and to really start to grow in frequency, in consciousness, there needs to be room, there needs to be connections, there needs to be understanding, and there needs to be a higher consciousness around what energy is and specifically how you work with it, how you individually are designed to work with it. And then this is where they're showing me a list of energy tools. So astrology, numerology, human design, just a few examples of ways to know your energy. And then they say, well, then you move it to understanding your body's energy system. 
by looking at different ways you can move energy through Reiki, acupuncture, EFT tapping, Jinshin Jitsu, etc. The different things that we have available to understand what our physical selves needs, our emotional selves, spiritual selves, all of this working together. And what they're showing me is that part of also what is being, uh, it, it looks like it's being, it's like a switch being switched over is that now that there's going to be more space and more room, this is where what we have considered to be junk DNA gets activated because that junk, quote unquote, is not at all. It's actually soul level consciousness. That soul level consciousness that's within our us at a cellular level needs a specific frequency in order to grow. It needs the correct environment. So this goes back to where you live or what's around you. What you need that is supportive of you, that's where this soul consciousness DNA can then start to awaken even more. And this is part of the overall awakening process that humans are moving through. That's actually activating more within us at a human level, physical level, that can be overwhelming. And they're showing me how it can be easy to short circuit or to blow a fuse or for something to not connect if this process doesn't happen in a gentle and progressive manner. They're saying this also goes back to how energies are coming onto the planet, coming into the Earth's atmosphere so that it doesn't overload our systems. It doesn't knock us out energetically. Um, similar to how the electronics can be overwhelmed by too much energy from the sun, such as coronial mass ejections. Uh, this is where there are things that are supporting the the physical body of the human. I mean, that's, that's just what they're showing me, that yes, there's bigger energy periods and there's things that we feel and that we're going to start feeling more. And we're going to get a sense of where we have to regulate ourselves. And they're saying that part of what we're learning, oh, this is interesting, is how we're stepping away from the industrial revolution and what we thought it meant to work. And they're saying that there is a deeper reprogramming here around how we're meant to use our energy. Instead of a nine to five, there are other options and other ways to do what you need to do to make a living, to pay your bills, but that it's not based on a, it's less of a time-based system. And of course, this is different for everybody. You would have to apply this to your own circumstances. Um, they're just showing me this overall trend that can actually be slow moving, but also happening quickly because now, you know, when you bring in automation, when you bring in what AI is doing and what technology can do in terms of tasks and jobs that were human-based, you know, they're showing me how, well, all of that's being replaced. And in fact, I was just at the grocery store the other day and all of the checkout lines were self-checkout. Um, there were, there was no person at the grocery store working through those procedures that we're used to. It's, it's that kind of a thing. And what they're saying is that this is actually the opportunity to move into new definitions of work, new definitions of a job, new definitions of a career, and that this, again, it happens differently for everyone and it doesn't affect every industry. It's not going to be like everyone experiences the exact same thing that would not happen, but they're showing an overall trend. The overall trend is that we're stepping away from what we thought work was supposed to look like on this planet, what you thought you had to do to have a job. And that there's great potential to actually partner with these automation systems or work with the technology, work with the new potentials that are available. And that that's part of what people are now considering and looking at, especially during the year 2020, when there's been the quarantine, the lockdown, the work from home. So they're showing me how all of this is meant to be a choice point opportunity for opening up or branching out into the next direction of your life. And what I'm feeling strongly is the energy of pioneers, pioneering into new terrain. And this is 
figurative, literal, metaphorical. It's sort of like across all energy systems, this is pioneering forward, moving into new experiences, both individually and collectively. And the feeling that there could not be a choice, but there is a choice. There's always a choice. But what's happening is that this correlates to the activation of that soul consciousness DNA that's reminding you more of who you are, of what was covered up or diminished or frozen or or just what you didn't have access to previously. There is more openings happening now. And I'm just seeing the visuals of energy at a cellular level, but it's really, really zoomed in, You, you know, nano microscopes. Like it's that really deep, deep internal energies that are being unlocked. And it's like they're awakening, but they're thriving. There's these energies that are thriving and they're pulsing at a very fast moving frequency and they're just wanting to break out. And then it, the more you zoom out, the more you see this happening in other places in the cells and then zoom out and zoom out. And so it just feels like There's a lot bursting open that is moving us forward individually and that this energy is a feeling. And again, this is so funny. They're saying, just get rid of your brain for a second. Don't be in your brain. Be in the energy. Be in the feeling. Be in the sensations that are all around you. Don't get locked into the mind. Go beyond that and understand that what is shifting is very powerful and very true. And this is the energy that also wakes you up at night. Um, (laughs) They're showing me that this is why it's changing our sleep patterns, changing our eating habits, changing how we feel the body. It's this faster moving, pulsing energy at a nano, a nano level that is growing and that it's moving us forward and showing us more of what's possible. All of this is part of the activation of the soul consciousness DNA, and it's helping to move you forward at a soul level, but then it shows up in human form or physical form in ways that are surprising, ways that you didn't realize, you know, things that you think, I'm not ready for that. They're saying that there's a lot more happening here And it's going to continue over the next number of years. Uh, They're showing me that this process, again, it's not meant to overwhelm our systems. We're not meant to blow a fuse. Uh, We're meant to understand how the energy is coming up. And this is why things are changing within you as well as all around you. Uh, They're saying that this is why we also can be feeling a lot more at this time that can show up as emotions. You're just feeling a lot more, like everything feels bigger, feels overwhelming. Uh, They're saying too that you have the ability to use that energy and to harness it, to use it to trust yourself, to use it to understand yourself, to use it to make connections to different parts of your own energy. And all of this feels really loving and kind. There's a lot of light There's a lot of support within these energy streams and it takes getting used to. It just takes getting used to it, moving through it, understanding it. So part of the energy of pioneering and pilgrimaging and and going on that next call of the soul is part of what the planet is undergoing right now. And I asked them about the U.S. presidential election and I was curious what that means and what this is about and what is important to understand. And one of the first responses I received from this commander individual was he was shaking his head no. And so I thought, well, how do I interpret that? And he then showed me that what you want to focus on is this new terrain. And that what's interesting about everything that's happening at the 3D level the Earth's matrix, this, the, the density of politics, the density of the Earth and what's shifting, is that he's showing me that there are many individuals on the planet who are reenacting Atlantis experiences. They are reenacting their own lower, unhealed 
parts of themselves that they at a soul level chose to heal in this lifetime. And so understand compassionately that every person on this planet has work to do. They have free will. They have their choice. They have their options about what they will do or what they won't do. And to understand that there are some people who have some, they're they're saying it's like, like contracts, soul contracts to fulfill karma to repay, and that they're moving through their own process. It's just on a bigger scale. But what he's saying when he shakes his head no is that there are people who are teachers and that as we are moving through this period on the planet, there are different teachers who come forward with different lessons. And it's funny because now they're taking me back to my own personal life when I was about to enter fifth grade. And in fifth grade, it was a really big thing to get a certain teacher. Uh, You wanted this teacher instead of this teacher because this teacher was supposedly more fun or more interesting or was better at what they did. But what they're showing me is that did it matter what teacher you got? Because it turned out that those two fifth grade classes were parallel and they did a lot of work together. They, they had to work together in ways that we didn't even know about. And they're showing me as, this, as the energy converges that different teachers bring forward different lessons and that part of what has happened on the planet is that very evolved people, those who thought they were out of the 3D reality, those who weren't interested in politics or weren't interested in certain levels of participation, shifted all their energy back into the 3D matrix, which made it come alive. And he's showing me the energy of the Aquarius water bearer, where that water bearer is pouring water. And he's showing me that basically a lot of people then poured their energy back into these 3D systems that activated them even more. He's like, now what we think is best is actually if you were to make the choice to shift your energy and pour that into this next terrain that needs to be created on the planet. And he's showing me that the energy is better served looking at what you are here to uniquely do and to be detached from these different political systems, um, power games, corruption, Uh, the betrayal, the lies, the deceit that so many people are not aware of. He says that isn't where your energy is best served. He's calling it a soap opera and that it could be indulging. It could be something that it feels like that momentary satisfaction, but that isn't the long-term priority. And he's saying that what is essential right now is that there needs to be people who can be so detached from the drama that's going to continue continue to play out that it's almost like it becomes a back burner thing. It's not something that you're giving all your energy to because all these people who then poured energy back into patriarchy, back into the 3D system, back into politics, it's like now the energy has to be scooped out to go forward, to go into these new terrains. And he's showing me that what is really needed here is the building of new realities, the building of new systems that work best for humans, and that there's so many people on the planet who have the unique tools to do this, but it's your choice of what you focus on, where you direct your energy, and what you choose. Now, the other thing that he's saying about the politics on the planet, like it's all connected, it's all interwoven, and so it can appear on the surface that we're focusing on, let's say, blue and red, but he's showing me that it's all connected, it's all interwoven together, and that what is happening on this planet is not tied to any one person, individual, or one color. So it's not like it's all about one political party doing one thing and the other party doing something. He's showing me this is the million mile high viewpoint where what needs to happen on this planet is already in motion. And he's showing me that it's a light agenda, meaning the agenda is of light on the planet. There's already been a lot of removal. And I mentioned this in previous messages. A lot has been removed, a lot of darkness, a lot of ancient reptilian energies have been removed. There are more, there is more work to do, but there is a lot that's already shifted in recent years 
that will continue to shift even if there's detours, even if there's roadblocks, even if there's dips in the energy, it's all going to continue, he says, because there is enough energy on this planet that has raised the vibration that's more of that's more light. There's more light on this planet that's helping with the understanding of what is allowed and what is not. And that if you can detach and take that higher viewpoint, you're detaching from the fear. When energy has been poured into the 3D matrix, it feeds entities that need human energy. And what he's saying is that so much of what's happening right now is going to be changing permanently anyway. And so he's showing me this. Okay, you go into remodel your house and you're wanting to shift around some furniture, bring in a new throw. You want to change the color palette. You know, there's something you want to move around. He says you can do that, but understand that this room is going to be removed anyways. This is not a long-term thing. And he's also showing me this visual of, of going off a cliff. And there's many ways to interpret that. But he's showing me there's energies that are moving off a cliff. He's like, they're going so fast. They have nowhere to go. There's hysteria behind the scenes. There's panic. There's desperation behind the scenes. There are many agendas on this planet that there are actually no way for some of these energies to continue. And they're literally going to go off a cliff, a la Thelma and Louise. And that is is part of their contract. That's part of what they're learning. That's part of their own reenactment of some of these Atlantis energies. But the change right now is that humanity is not going with them. Oh, I just got chills. Humanity is not going off a cliff. In fact, that's why it's important to focus on the new terrain that you're building, the new paradigm, the new ways of living, the new ways of life, the new ways of working with people, of healing each other, of being there for each other. All of this is much, much more important than the soap opera that is only going to be in effect for a short period of time before everything changes anyways. So what they're saying is that you have choice around where you put your energy and that this you know, will connect with people at different levels of your being, uh, depending on, of course, what matters to you, what you're involved in, all of this. And there's no judgment. It's not as if you're making a wrong choice if you're heavily involved in politics or if you really want to see a certain candidate uh, take a role. He's not saying there's, there's no judgment around that, really, because you're creating your own experience. You are prioritizing what you value or what matters to you right now. But again, this million mile high viewpoint is that a lot of things that you think are important right now aren't going to be important in four years, five years, seven years. What will be important later in this decade is this new terrain, what you're creating, what you've understood about yourself, and that he's showing me that there's many people who are working now to stabilize this new terrain. He's also showing me that there have been some key players on the world stage who have helped move humanity forward and that even if these individuals are misunderstood, um, even if they aren't really clearly seen because of different layers of their being and different things that they say or do, um, he's showing me three people who have been instrumental in helping com communities move forward, helping humanity move forward, helping to shift and change what's on the planet. And so, of course, my curiosity is, oh, well, who are these three people? And I can't quite see their faces or even the outlines of their physical selves. He's showing me that they actually have their own experience right now at a cellular level of these nano light frequencies moving them and shaking them so that they can do bigger work on the planet. And, and then he's telling me to not worry about names and to not focus on that. <laughs> um, so the, the messages are more about what is needed going forward and that 
Yes, there's been a lot happening behind the scenes, and there will continue to be a lot happening behind the scenes. He's saying there will be more assassination attempts on both sides. There will be more levels of the game playing that are very corrupt. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of people clenching on to to power, to roles, to their agendas, but that that has to play out in a certain timeline. And he just keeps saying that the energy needs to move forward. We need those who can help move the energy forward. So stepping away from these 3D paradigms, stepping out of this matrix energy that's really dense, isn't really going to serve us long term, even if there's something enjoyable about the soap opera or watching things play out. He's saying 70% of your energy should be on this new terrain, the new terrain in your life, the new terrain in your body, the new terrain in your world, your career, your profession. But that all contributes to forming this new terrain on the planet. And then this is where we also are activating more of the Aquarius energies, the Aquarius age of experiences. And as I say all this, now he's bringing me back to a visual of the planet and how the Earth's energies are changing, where even the blue and green hues and shades are going to be shifting because we're bringing in more light and those energies are changing the planet, similar to when you are painting and you have blue and you add a little bit of white to the blue and it makes it a different shade of blue. It's that, but we're bringing in the light and it's shifting the colors. It's shifting what we're feeling and seeing. So I'm feeling so strongly that the main message here is to keep moving forward into the new energies and to be responsible about monitoring yourself, monitoring what you place importance on, what you direct your energy towards, and to know that in the next number of years, four to seven years, is when things are really going to be needed. These new structures, these new foundations are really going to be essential And that if you can focus on that going forward, that's what's going to support, he's saying that's what supports us the best. It supports us when you're aware of your own power, you're aware of your own choices, you're aware of all the energy that you have access to, and you can stay in that place of being very clear about what is important for the long term. And so on that note, I'm going to end this message right now because of how dizzy I feel and how hungry I am. When I connect with these energies, it's a lot. It takes it out of me. So I need to go rest right now. Um, But thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, there is a playlist on YouTube about channeled messages. And that's where I will continue to organize this information so that you can listen to it as often as you'd like. You can listen to them as many times as you'd like because there is a frequency that comes through. And I know that many of you feel it. You feel it. You know it. You sense it. And that's really important as well. That's also why this energy is needed at this time on the planet so that it gives you that support for what you're experiencing as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online or my author website, consciouscoolchic.com. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday for more podcast episodes. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful journey ahead and I'll talk to you soon.